So last time we spoke uh, it was the Monday before your fight. You were you hadn't heard from the UFC. You hadn't fought in over a year. Now you're officially a UFC fighter. How does it feel? And it's just uh, I wish words could uh, describe how how I feel. You know, it's it's always been my dream since I was you know 17, 18 years old in college. You know, to to compete on the big stage. You know, to be a professional athlete, not not just a journeyman, but to be somebody that's competitive. You know, and and right now, like for an MMA fighter, being in the UFC is like for a football player getting to the NFL. It's the highest and the biggest organization in the whole world. And to know that I'm competing with the best athletes in the world every fight from here on out, I mean, that, that's just exciting, man. I get to go out there and showcase my skills and what I've been working on over the last couple of years and, or last, you know, 12, 13, 14 years, plus, you know, the extra years of wrestling. And, uh, man, I, I couldn't be happier, man. I'm, I'm, I'm living my own dream. So uh, where were you when you got the call? Were you at home? Were you at the gym? No, I was uh, on my way to dinner. Me and my girlfriend were going to get Thai food. We were uh, driving down the uh, Vegas Strip, kind of checking it out because everything's still kind of dead. Uh, or was that when they opened up? I can't remember. We were either going to check it because it was dead or because it just had opened up. I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, we're driving down the road, and Jason called. And uh, when he calls, you know, that's usually good news, man. So uh, he called, and he says, hey, can you make weight Friday? I said, bet. And uh, that was about it, man. It's, I didn't, it didn't really sink in. And actually didn't even sink in until after the fight, honestly. I was so overwhelmed from that phone call till after my fight. I, I, I can't believe even looking back, like, what happened. Like, I was so dumbfounded. Even the following Monday, I was like, is this real life now? And, you know, it's, this is real life. And, and I am in the UFC. And I am competitive. I do have the fastest knockout in debut history, the second fastest finish in debut history. This is real. This is my new reality. So, um, like I said, it took me a little bit of time. I went home, spent time with friends and family, people that are close to me, and, uh, you know, you know, re just realize I'm living the dream. And now, you know, I'm looking to make a quick turnaround, and uh, you might see me in the cage sooner than you think. I like to hear that. Did you end up uh, changing your order there at the uh, the restaurant, or did you stick with the same thing you were going to order? No, we, we were on our way there. So I just, uh, like, when I got the phone with Jason, she goes, who's that? And uh, I said, that was Jason. She goes, well, what did he want? I said, well, I guess I'm fighting Saturday. And she was, she was more excited than me because, again, I, I didn't believe it, you know, at first. You know, this is this is my dream. It's been my dream since I was, you know, we're talking 12 years, you know, 70 fights ago almost. And uh, it came true. We just turned around, went back to the house. I started chugging water, stopped drinking water that night. And the rest is history. So when we, when we spoke, um, you said I would take any fight – and the UFC, whether it be 185, 170, 155, 145, it didn't matter. I think 185 and 170 are probably out of the question now. But but where is your home? Is it 145 or 155? Obviously, you can make the weight on four days' notice. So uh, is that your goal, stay at 155, or do you think you're going to uh, move down to 45? I think I'm going to bounce around. Uh, you know, the negotiation we're talking about moving down now in the next couple weeks. Uh, but with that being said, you know, it's – it's a freaking tough weight cut for me, man. I know I'm not very tall. I'm only 5'7", but, you know, I got thick legs. You know, I, you know, I got, you know, a thick core. 45 is tough, man. And, you know, when I get down there, I don't know how I'm going to feel. And, and that's what it comes down to. And, I mean, I, I have the power of a, of a welterweight, you know. So even at 55, as you see, my friend, we're talking about Frank Camacho, who has seven fights. I hit him, I hit him twice, you know, and, and the second one dropped him, like, I can knock guys out at 140. I, I, I am definitely big and powerful at 145. I'm, I'm average size, maybe a little small for 155, but I can still knock people out. You know, I, I, have, I, have, I have power in my hips, power in my legs. You know, I played a season of college football. I played football all through. So, you know, all those power lifts that we used to do and all the heavy lifting used to do, I think it's transferred a lot into, in, in, into striking. You know, like when you turn your hips, when, you're, when I played baseball, you know, I was a home run hitter in baseball, turning my hips over, bringing that leg power and strength. And I think it's transitioned into my to my left hook and my right hand to to knock people out. So when you ask, is 45 or 55 my home? For now, I'm just going to bounce back and forth. And honestly, even if they call, even if there's like, oh fuck, there's an injury at 170, I'll jump in. It's you know, I'll jump in at 170. Like I, I just want to fight. I want to compete. I want to get my face out there, and I want to test myself against the best fighters in the world, whether it's at 45 to 70. You know, I want to be the guy that they're calling that they know is going to show up in shape, whether it's 45, 55, or 70. And like I said, there's another short notice at 70. You bet your ass I'm calling Sean and saying, hey, I'll jump if you need it. It's at 55. I'm jumping in. I don't care if it's a top 10 guy, a fucking journeyman. I don't, I don't give a F, man. I just, 
I just want to fight, man. I want to, it's, you know, Robert Falls always said the money of your MMA or the money is made at the end of your career. And although I'm not at the end of my career, but this is in the later years of my career, you know, I've been doing this for 12, I've been doing MMA for 12 years and I, I want to make some money, man. I'm not looking for a six month layoff. I want paycheck after paycheck after paycheck, knockout bonus, fight of the night bonus, submission bonus. Like I'm fighting for bonuses now, man. It's, you know, and everything else will fall in place. So you said you were fighting for bonuses. I uh, I went back and I listened to our to our interview the first uh, like the week of your fight essentially, and you said I would take a one thousand dollar fight in the UFC over a hundred thousand dollar fight any in any other organization, and you went out there dominated in forty something seconds, and you ended up getting a performance bonus. How good did it feel to get that performance bonus? Dude, it, again, <sighs> I I, can't, I wish I could describe it like. When they announced it at the end of the card after Curtis Blade and the other heavyweight he fought and they announced my name on ESPN for the performance bonus, like, I, I don't, I don't know. It didn't, it just didn't seem real. Like there must be another Justin James, you know what I mean? Because I just kind of sat there and I'm like, all right, that's pretty cool. Like that's fucking incredible. Like that money has changed my life for the first time in my whole life. I'm debt free. Um, you know, I, I'm looking to make some investments here in the next couple months like, you know, life-changing investments all over 40 seconds. But, you know, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, you, got, you, you, got, you made 80 grand in 40 seconds. Well, after I pay my coaches, after I pay my managers, you know, I'm walking away with a little bit less than half, uh, you know, because of taxes as well. But irregardless to that, my life has been changed. Um, you know, I, I couldn't be happier when they announced it. I just didn't think it was real. And uh, it is real, though, you know, and, and that's my reality. So, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I can't describe, I, I'm trying to describe you in words of how it felt, but I, it, I just can't. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy turnaround. Cause I was, I was like, it was announced on, I think Thursday and I'm like, I just spoke to him. I was like, you know, we were just speaking like two days earlier. It's like, almost like I predicted it. I'm going to say I predicted it. I, I did actually. I think you made a, a special phone call to Dana and we got it done. That's exactly what I did. I wish I had his number in my phone, but uh, unfortunately, I don't. <laughs> um, was there ever? I mean, he missed weight, and I think that that was huge. I mean, when when he missed weight, I was like, "Don't, don't take it." I was like, "You know what? You're in the UFC already." So, was there ever a point where you were like, "You know what? If I don't take this fight, it doesn't matter. I'm in the UFC. I can get a proper training camp in. I can get ready and 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 you know get another fight." Or, no hesitation, I'll take it. No hesitation. I take it. I actually, t so, uh, uh, Frank and I have the same manager. And, uh, when my manager texted me and said, Hey, Frank's having a hard time making weight. The only thought in my head was stop cutting because what's going to happen is Frank is such a tough, mentally tough guy that he's going to cut weight to, to a point to where he might end up in the hospital. And then if he ends up in the hospital, the fight gets canceled. You know, that's the last thing I wanted. When I heard he was cut, I was like, Hey, tell him to chill. Tell him just to relax where he's at. You know, if he's a couple pounds over, it's not a big deal to me. My biggest fear, the way my luck runs is I do all the right things. I make the weight. And then for some crazy reason, he ends up in the hospital with an IV and our fight gets canceled. And that's how my luck runs. So as soon as Jason texts me that he's hard, having a hard time with weight, I was like, bro, like, all right, hey, we need this. Hey, two pounds. I don't give a fuck about two pounds. He can miss weight by five pounds. I don't give a fuck. Two or five pounds doesn't change the outcome of the fight. It doesn't change the performance of the fight. If, I mean, two pounds is fucking nothing. Like, I, I, uh, I've missed weight before. I've missed weight by five pounds, by two I've missed weight like three times in my career. It fucking sucks. And the last thing I wanted was Frank to, uh, Frank to uh, end up in the hospital on IV and our fight getting canceled. So I, I, I was, I, like I said, he could have thought he could have waited in 170. I, I was fighting, man. My, my, my friends and family. I was geeked for it. I was ready for it. I was in shape. And, uh, you know, it, it all, uh, it all unfolded the way it was supposed to. So when I get back to your question, when I saw him miss weight, I don't give a fuck. I even told him, I put my arm, like, if you guys watched the video of us facing off, I put my arm, arm around him and told him, I was like, Hey, hydrate up, dude, be healthy for tomorrow. And let's have some fun. And he said, hell yeah. And that was it. He, uh, he's probably the most experienced fighter you've ever fought in your career. Obviously he didn't have a whole lot of time to, to game plan or, or come in with a strategy <laughs> with such short notice. But was there was there a point where you were like, you know what, maybe I should just go out there and start swinging and hopefully clip them, or was it like let's try to find a way to, like, what was the game plan going in into that to uh to kind of like, to expecting that he's a very experienced guy, he's been there, he's been in slugfests, what was the game plan? I, I wanted to catch him off guard. All right, so me coming into the UFC, 
you know, uh, you know, they talk about the UFC jitters or, you know, like uh, the adrenaline dump. I have 70 MMA fights, although they're not in the UFC. I've fought in big arenas. I fought in Bellator. I have fought a lot of tough guys. I fought a lot of guys that should be in the UFC or ha- are in the UFC. So with that being said is my I try to put myself in Frank's position. All right. He's looking up. He's a huge favorite in this fight. You know, he's going against, you know, uh, 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 a guy on short notice who may ha- may or may not have been training, which I was. And, you know, I thought Frank was going to try and take it in the later rounds to test my gas tank. Well, unfortunately for him, that I am, I was in shape. If you remember Monday, I, we were talking about yeah. training. I was, sta- I was training hard this whole time. Maybe not as hard as if I was getting ready for a fight, but I still was training hard. My weight was low. And, uh, you know, my, my game plan was to, I remember, I, I want to show him, hey, look, like, I might be the new kid on the block, but I'm not afraid of you. And I'm not afraid of anybody when it comes to that. Like, I, I want to jump in and I want to hit him hard. Like, I come up with that double jab to my overhand right. Although he blocked it, I, I know in his head, he's like, all right, I don't want to get hit by that punch because this guy's committing to his shots. And the whole game plan was just to come forward to pressure him, you know, to show him that I'm my cardio is good, my power is good, and any kind of fight he wants to have, I'm ready for. And, and, and uh, you know, fortunately, I clipped him early and uh, was able to finish it quick. What was it like competing in an empty arena? Uh, I know we talked a little bit about what you thought it might be like. Uh, now you actually competed in one. Um, so what what did it feel like to be in there and hearing commentators and hearing all that? Obviously, in forty something seconds, you didn't you probably didn't get to uh, get to experience all that. But uh, but what was it like, dude? I, I was so tunnel vision, man. It was it's it was so tunnel vision. I'm getting goosebumps talking about it because I'm trying to like think back and I, I mean I was so zoned in on him uh for the first time I was my own coach almost if I if I should say I wasn't listening to my corner uh not that you know that they would have changed anything by any means I couldn't hear the commentators I couldn't hear my corner I couldn't hear his corner all I remember is fuck this guy up and hit him hard and if I get knocked down the process I get knocked down the process man it's you know I'm not here to to lay and pray and win boring fights I'm here uh, to, for, for, for people to talk about my fights, whether it's, I win or lose, you know, even when Justin Gaethje's lost a couple times, you know, to Eddie Alvarez, like that was an incredible fight. And everybody was buzzing about it, about how much hard he has and how fucking tough he is. And that's the way I want to be remembered too. Just walking forward, no matter how much damage is done and swinging shots and trying to knock people out. I'm going to fight hard until my gas tank is on empty. And even when it's on empty, I'm still not done. You know, I got a reserve tank too. But with that being said, you know, these guys better understand I'm, I'm not intimidated. I have nothing to lose, whether I'm a favorite, whether I'm the dog. I have nothing to lose in these fights. I've accomplished all my goals up to this point. And now, although I'm adjusting my goals going forward, of course, but guess what? Pressure's on my opponent because I'm, I'm not going to break to that stuff. Speaking of going forward and being tough and, and whatnot, uh, someone you've worked with, uh, spent quite a bit of time working with, Dan Ige fought fought last night what's your thoughts on his performance obviously it was a losing effort but I mean I thought he he shocked me I thought he was get, honestly I thought he was gonna get knocked out I thought Calvin Cater is very very aggressive very very dangerous and Dan Ige surprised me and he held his own didn't get knocked down won a couple rounds in my opinion he looked really good in my opinion Dan is Dan is one of the toughest guys in the gym one of the hardest working guys in the gym one of the best teammates in the gym man I couldn't tell you how proud I was even, you know, going into the later rounds, you know, going into the fifth round, he knows he's, you know, it's, I had, I had him going into the fifth round three to one and, you know, he's still slinging punches. You know, it looks like he might've, he might've cracked his orbital or uh, can't even talk orbital. Uh, but you know, he's still coming forward, swinging punches, you know, even at the end of the round, he takes that flying knee drops down to a knee and he's still scrambling, you know, like Dan is, is a guy, he's a younger guy. I know he's a lot younger than me, but I look up to him, man. Like this is a guy that came out here with a, with a goal, and now he's headlining in the UFC. He's seven or he's six and two in the UFC. Uh, he's he's a top ten fighter. Um, I couldn't be more proud. I thought he I thought he did everything really good, and you know it, he did the best he could, man. He laid it all out there. Cater is a tough dude, man. I watched a couple of his fights leading up, and man, that guy's the real deal. I I, I can see him being the champ in the next uh, uh, next two. Uh, one or two or maybe uh, fuck i mean he takes one more fight he's in title contention he might he might be the next champ speaking of uh people who perform there at fight island nick sick i think he's very underrated coach looked really good steps in corners jared gordon and jared gordon get, gets a win i mean what's your thoughts on, on him as a coach i mean he looked i've i've talked to him before and uh super humble super super nice guy and 
I mean, incredible stepping in and, and cornering Gordon to a win as well. I mean, Eric has been my boss for, I don't know, my, maybe six years now. You know, he's the manager of Extreme Couture. But, you know, prior to that, or yeah, as he's my boss, he's still my friend, man. And he's somebody that I look up to for advice. There's a lot of time, you know, he's not specifically my coach. Um, you know, I've, I've had the same coaches for the last several years. Uh, but as for Eric's, you know, experience in the UFC, man, he's, he's there almost every weekend, at least once a month, you know, cornering somebody. And I tell you what, what Eric, what Eric is the best at is making you feel good about yourself. Like this guy will tell you when you're doing things right and tell you when you're doing things wrong. And when you're doing things right, he's going to make sure, you know, you're doing them right. You know, he's cornered me in a couple fights and, uh, you know, I, I couldn't be happier. He's a great guy. He's a great boss. He's a great friend and he's a great coach. And, uh, you know, I, I, and, and anybody that has him in his corner is, is, uh, it should be honored to have him because he's been around the game. He's been in the gym, you know, grinding, you know, under Robert falls with Dennis Davis, you know, doing his own thing as well, you know, with his own fighters. Uh, er, Eric is, is an upstanding citizen to say the least. And I'm very happy and proud uh, to work for him and be friends with him. You know, and, and, and it comes down to that is, you know, although, like I said, although he is my boss, he's still my friend and he's somebody that I look to for advice on the regular. Speaking of Fight Island, um, is that something that you're interested in? I mean, obviously you competed right there in your hometown uh, in Vegas, didn't have to go far for it. Are you willing to travel across the world for your next fight or would Man, you like to have it uh, have it there at home where it's convenient? As I always said throughout my career, I'm never I don't think I'm ever going to become a millionaire off fighting. I just want to travel the world and, and, you know, fight people. That's it. So when it comes to fight Island, hell yes, I'll travel to Mars to fight somebody. Dana White needs to buy a little, little lot on Mars. We need to fly some fighters out there because I'm in the game, not only because I love it, but I love to travel, man. And, uh, you know, last year, I, you know, so far out of my 20 fights as a pro, I fought in India. I fought in Mumbai, India. I fought in Scotland. I fought in Hawaii. You know, like I, I want, uh, you know, I, I want to travel the world and fight. So if I got an opportunity to fight on Fight Island this weekend, your boy's jumping on it. So next, next week, but yeah, <laughs> there's a fight. There's a fight on Saturday. If you, uh, <laughs> if something comes up, they call me. I'm ready and I'm ready to go. Oh, actually, yeah, unfortunately, my suspension's lifted August second. Uh, so it does look like my next fight will be in Vegas. Um, but that's no hero there. Is there a uh, is there an opponent you have in mind? I don't know if there's anything that I can't know or anything like that. But if there's a if there's an opponent or a couple opponents that that you're thinking of on top of your head that you'd be interested in fighting? Uh, we're working something out right now with someone specific, uh, and I'm, I I don't want to go public with it yeah. until uh, it's for sure. I don't want to start saying names and then it fall through. And uh, but right now, in the next day or two, uh, I'm going to go public with uh, a specific person. I love it, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for jumping back on here, man. I really appreciate it. Um, what can we expect in your next fight, regardless of who it is or where it is? What can we expect? Something similar to the first, obviously on five fight first round finish streak, or uh, or are you trying to trying to get out there and, and, and maybe test yourself and go to the to uh, you know the later rounds? It's it's you know I've already been in later rounds. I've been in five round fights. I've went the distance in five round fights before. It, it, the test for myself is how fast can I finish a motherfucker? Like people, because people have said this before, you know, like what you're saying is like, Oh, you want to test yourself in later rounds. I've already been there and done that in order for me to go to the later rounds. My opponent has to earn that spot. I'm not, I'm not just going to coast in the second round to see if I'll last. My, my objective is to knock that motherfucker out or sub him as fast as I can. The faster I sub somebody or knock them out, the faster I get to go to the bar and drink some cold beer. And, and that's very important to me. What's your, uh, what's your beer of choice? uh the cold kind if it's cold i like it <laughs> all right man uh th that's my favorite kind as well thank you uh, i appreciate you taking the time and uh all the best uh with, with whatever's next hey thanks man i really appreciate you and anytime you want if you're in time you want to you know talk it up just holler at me and i'm ready to go of course man i uh i mean it's, it's awesome that i spoke to you on a monday you were fighting on a saturday i uh Absolutely. i love that i feel like i'm part of your journey um hey. You, you you saw me Monday all depressed like a little bitch, and now I feel like a million dollars, and uh, I don't think anything can bring me down. All right, man. All the best. Thank you so much for the time, and uh, keep fishing, man. I'm, I, I see you're uh, see you're bringing in some uh, some big fish there on Instagram. Super excited, man. I'm a big time spear fisherman and a real fisherman. When I say real, I mean R E E L. Uh, yeah, we just slayed some bass and some walleye out in Michigan and Lake St. Clair, man. It's 
I, I fight so I can hunt and fish. Hunting and fishing are my passions. Fighting is my job and my passion as well. But it's third place be behind hunting and fishing. I'll have to uh, I'll have to get out there and, and and maybe shoot a deer or something. I really want to try this deer heart thing that you guys do. Uh, uh, that, that grown man shit, dude. Hey, where 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 are you at right now? Are you in the Midwest? I'm in uh, I'm in Halifax, Nova Scotia. I'm in Canada. Halifax. Oh shit. You know what? You're not going to root for me in my next fight because I believe my next opponent's from Halifax as well. Isn't that by? Uh, isn't that where Trailer Park Boys is shot? Yep. Yep. Hell same yeah. uh, same province. Yeah, they're just up the street. I taught one of them how one of their kids how to swim. No shit, really. That is fucking yeah. badass. I'm a huge Trailer Park Boys fan. I watch Trailer Park Boys every night before I go to sleep. I turn it on, and I've been doing that for the last couple of years. I just think it's it's crazy, and I, it's as goofy and dumb as it is. I think it's hilarious. All right, man. All the best. Thank you so much for the time, and uh, man, I can't wait to watch the next one. Sounds good, bro. I'll talk to you later.